well hello and a very warm welcome. Uh, this thought for the day will be the last for three weeks. I'll be taking a short break. Look forward to seeing you uh, after the break. This morning it's, as promised, another poem by the American ecologist and man of faith, uh, Wendell Berry. Our own resurrection is something that we don't think about very often, I suspect. Probably because it involves thoughts of death, thoughts of loss, and rather sombre thoughts. We cling to the promise of glory in Christ, but we shy away from what must precede it, don't we? We are all human. Listen to this well-known passage from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all die. That's a lost truth, isn't it? The Bible and the heritage of faith that we have teaches that Jesus will come when we least expect him. So there is a possibility that nearly all, if not all, of us uh, watching this will still be alive when Christ returns. But there's also a possibility that we will not be. And we speak of the peace of Christ in which we lie until the consummation of all things, don't we? We look to have our ashes scattered or to be buried or to be remembered in a peaceful place, be it woodland, be it a natural site, or be it in a peaceful country churchyard. The idea of resurrection, the perishable, putting on imperishability, it's really hard to imagine. What does it look like? What does this glorious moment look like? It's a subject that has fascinated painters for many years. And often the only way that they can convey the glory of Christ's return, the glory of resurrection, is in the abstract, something too wonderful and mysterious even to depict in art. And yet that we know from the book of Malachi that the son of righteousness, Christ, the son of righteousness, will rise with healing, healing that heals even the sting of death, with healing in his wings. And that idea of sunrise, that idea of light breaking through into darkness and reanimating the whole of creation in a new way, is something to which we cling and believe. And yet at its heart, it's, if this isn't a strange way of putting it, more than just mystery. 
It is also re-encounter, re-embodying, re-becoming, becoming the people that we were made to be in eternity, and joining with the saints of all ages, becoming who they were meant to be in eternity. We don't really know what that will look like, but we know we will be with Christ. And we will be in fellowship with each other as we were before, joining in the praise of eternity in the light of Christ. And somehow we do need, human as we are, to understand that in terms of people like you and me, rising and just meeting each other again, perhaps offering each other a definitely pre-COVID grasp of love and re-encounter and deep personal joy, just where we are. After the poem, we'll see uh, another example of that uh, in the most well-known uh, painting uh, in these islands of the resurrection, Stanley Spencer's, Stanley Spencer's Cookham, the Resurrection, which is a similarly, it's a huge canvas, we can only see a part of it, that a sense of Christ being there and freeing us to re-encounter him, uh, in whose peace we have lain, and re-encounter each other. But now, Wendell Berry's time. It's called Sabbaths 2001, 2001 uh, simply because that was the year in which he wrote it. It's written from the point of view of a person who has died. He wakes in darkness. All around are sounds of stones shifting, locks unlocking, as if someone had lifted away a great weight. Light falls on him. He has been asleep, simply gone. He has known a long suffering of himself. Himself, shapen by the pain of his wound of separation, he now no longer minds, for the pain is only himself now, grown small, becoming a little growing longing joy. Something teaches him to rise, to stand, and move out through the opening the light has made. He stands on the green hilltop amid the cedars, the skewed stones, the earth, all open doors. Half blind with light, he traces with a forefinger the moss-grown furrows of his name. Hearing, among the others, one woman's cry. She is crying and laughing, her voice a stream of silver he seems to see. Oh, William, honey, is it you? Oh! Surely it will be for this, the red bud pink, the wild plum white, yellow trout lilies in the morning light, the trees, the pastures turning green, on the river quiet as daybreak, the reflections of the trees as in another world lie across from shore to shore. Yes, here is where they will come, the dead, when they rise from the grave.